I wanted to share some exciting news with you in archaeology. And yes, that is the kind of news that I find exciting. I don't really keep up with the rest of it. The scrolls at Herculaneum. There was a prize that was offered to unroll these scrolls digitally that had been charred to a crisp as a product of Mount Vesuvius erupting and engulfing Pompeii and Herculaneum in something like 100 feet of volcanic ash in 79 AD. During that time, so in Herculaneum, there was something called the Villa of the Papyri. So it's this house that has a bunch of these scrolls in it. I mean, it's tons of this stuff. 2,000 years old, almost 2,000 years old, that have not been touched, but we haven't been able to unroll. So we've known about this site for, you know, a couple of hundred years, but we haven't been able to actually unroll them until now. So Nat Friedman offered a substantial sum of money, and he's someone who, you know, made his money in tech and uh, went on podcasts and broadcasting this information. And I told my students about it last summer and said, okay, you know, look, here's a great opportunity for machine learning. They're offering these scans that they've done, detailed scans of the charred scrolls. And the scrolls themselves look like cigars in the sense that, I mean, there's no hope of reading these things, right? I mean, they're just charred bits of ash. And so what we had to do then was to try and digitally unroll them based upon the scanned information. There was no even thought that, you know, maybe this would work, maybe it wouldn't, who, know, who knows? I mean, even Nat said that this was kind of a crazy project. But as of the last 24 hours, it worked. And we now have the first of those scrolls, or at least part of one of those scrolls, digitally unrolled, and it looks amazing. It's part of Philodemus' work. So Philodemus was an Epicurean philosopher, and it's apparently something about, you know, talking about music and capers. I mean, it's, you know, okay, it's interesting. We've got some of his stuff. He's not one that's extremely well known, but, you know, that that's okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, what's interesting about this, though, is that there are two distinct possibilities that I don't hear people talking about very much. So there's some thought that the house itself was owned by either, you know, Julius Caesar's father-in-law, that it was actually in the, you know, uh, imperial family, which would be very interesting, and that might imply that it was a substantial library that would have all kinds of good stuff in it, but probably also, you know, political works and maybe works of literature and that sort of thing, which would be very interesting. But someone has also suggested in the early 20th century that it was actually Philodemus' own house. Now, one of the reasons for this is because it contains multiple copies of the same work. So not all of these were charred to ash, right? I mean, some of these we've actually been able to, you know, deal with before today. But it's so exciting that now we're actually going to be under, able to digitally unroll these things. It's, it, these are things that for 2,000 years have been completely lost. But anyway, so Philodemus was an Epicurean philosopher. Now, there's over a hundred years between Philodemus's life in the first century BC and the eruption of Mount Vesuvius that actually buried the town and buried the villa. So, I mean, it wouldn't have been him at the time. It would have been passed down. But I mean, even if it was his house and he had a lot of his treasure stored there, you know, fine, all well and good. What's exciting about that is that if it wasn't a Caesar who owned the house and it was actually Philodemus, the Epicureans were a reaction against Platonism and then later against Stoicism. And during the time of the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in the first century AD, Epicureanism was alive and well and would be alive and well for another century or two after that. And so if it does contain Philodemus's library or even other philosophical works that are related to Epicureanism, then we may actually have, and you know, drum roll pr please, right? We may actually have lost works of the Stoics or maybe even of Plato. That would really be amazing. But of course, not even just Plato, but the others in the academy who succeeded Plato. So, I mean, we're talking about a potential treasure trove of literature, of works in philosophy and otherwise that have been buried for thousands of years. And the idea that we can even unroll this is, is just simply amazing. But anyway, so the students, and they were students, which is, is really fabulous and, and wonderful in a certain way, who actually were able to do this and digitally unroll the scrolls using machine learning, received 
three people split $700,000 in prize money, but it's not over. There's still an additional 100,000 for the next phase, taking that and making it, uh, applying it to reading 90% up to 90%, that's like the winning condition of the scrolls. And they say that it's something like 16 megabytes of text. It's a tremendous amount of text that we're gonna be able to get out of this. So anyway, very exciting. It's the kind of thing, it's the kind of, it's the kind of news and the kind of thing that I get excited about because we might actually be able to recover some text that, I mean, during my lifetime, this has not happened that I know of. The most recent find that was like this, of course, is what we have with uh, Nag Hammadi or in Qumran and, you know, the Dead Sea Scrolls back in the, the 1940s. And so uh, this could potentially be really very, very interesting because, of course, even in the context of Christianity, right? I mean, this is, you know, in, in Italy, in Rome, Imperial Rome. And uh, it was just after, in a couple of generations after the time of Christ. So the dating there, you know, death approximately, what, 30 to 35 AD, uh, and then Vesuvius erupting 40 years later. I mean, this is not that long. So what is in that library? That will be very, very interesting to see. So I was excited about it. I thought that you all might be excited about it. So I wanted to do kind of a non-traditional video in this way just to let you know what was going on. And uh, now you can be excited with me. Hopefully we'll hear more about that in the coming days. <laughs>